Terry Collins here for Central Coast Newspapers with our first video interview for the new year. And today I'm very happy to welcome into the office Gosford MP Lisa Tesh, who uh, came to the seat in a 1917 by-election and will be recontesting the seat at the March 23 election. So Liesl, just a couple of words from you firstly on how your first two years in office has gone and then we'll go on to some of the issues that you're hoping to tackle in your next term if re-elected. Thanks Terry, it's fabulous to be here and welcome to the new year and welcome to the Terry Collins on the paper. <laughs> um, no, it's a real, I, almost every day I woke up, wake up thrilled to represent the people of the community like, and every day there's a new challenge and I think every day I'm more passionate about really fighting for the people of the Central Coast. So. I don't know, the people power example of the parking fines was just a, a great victory for people coming together about injustice and really working up the chain as to what, how it all works and then getting a great result and getting those fines waived. Yeah, so Lisa, for those people who might be watching and aren't aware of that situation, multiple fines were issued to residents in the Peninsula area on January 21 by one highway patrol officer. Fines of some $260 each for people parking on the grass verge outside their own homes Liesl took up the battle and what, what <laughs> happened there, Liesl, you had a victory, they were waived. Yeah, it was a great victory and it was a great test for me and every day I'm learning about, it wasn't actually our local police, so they were obviously frustrated, they work really hard to look after our community and all of a sudden everyone's going, oh, the police, but as a highway patrol person, there's been a review and the fines have been waived, but standing behind me is a mass of humanity across the peninsula going, yes, we've had a fight and we've won. Yeah, it was quite something yesterday mm. to see the, the protest rally yeah. just before the announcement that they were they were actually Absolutely, waived. Absolutely, yeah. And but so the, the people power has been really interesting for me. When I got up the food chain of the police conversations, it'll take about three weeks for the review. But I think with the media support as well, all of a sudden that afternoon, we got the indication that the fines would be waived. Yeah, good to know that it's not necessarily the end if there's a government fine of any kind, if yeah. it's not just... The yeah, people can absolutely. rally and protest absolutely. through the appropriate channels. Absolutely, and there channels. are channels to go in place. And that's what I mean in their office. I'm not in the office every day, but I've got a great team in the office that deal with small challenges that people have got in the community. And in the background, we've had lots of great victories. Okay. So, Liesl, um, going ahead to the elections coming up in oh. less than two months <laughs> now, um, and I know there are several issues that you're quite passionate about pursuing in your next term if re-elected. I know you're very passionate about the dredging situation at Edelong. Give us a bit of an idea there. Absolutely, and I think as a sailor, I've watched that channel really, really, probably closer than a lot of people, but I know it has a massive impact in our community and we need a better policy. So what the debacle that's been in our community and the ferries shutting down was really the tip of the iceberg. So that never happens again. So I'm really pushing for a better program into the future so we don't have to have I don't know, our community and the economy of our local community being shut down and, and the inconvenience for all our people who commute using the beautiful waterways. So part mm -hmm. of my conversation is we live in heaven on these beautiful waterways and really looking after the waterways and getting the waterways as activated as we possibly can so people are using the waterways as part of their, hopefully, day-to-day -day activities. So Lisa, I imagine there's going to be, I know there's a committee being set up to look at long-term solutions. Obviously there's going to have to be some liaison between the government and council because the issue for years over that Edelong Channel has been um, disagreement over who is responsible for paying for that dredging. Absolutely, and the pushback onto ratepayers funding that wasn't that wasn't really budgeted by the council, but then came out of ratepayers' pockets to pay for the half and half thing. We've got to look at that as a long term, but we really need to do some proactive work because under the current policy, that's been left to really seal it up. I mean, I've got people calling the office saying, I've been stuck in my tinny in places where I've never been stuck before. So mm. we've got some research going on as to the best possible solutions there, and we need the injection of funds to really sort it out once and for all, and a relationship with council. So there's a policy and planning process in with council as well, so we don't get to the point we've seen okay. in 2018. <clears throat> Right. I know too, Lisa, that you have rather strong views on the Wallera 2 issue. Could you elaborate a little bit on how you feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, and it's a tough one. And David Harris has been leading the charge. So Wallera 2 is a planned coal mine by a Korean company up in the Wyong electorate, which is actually going to be really have huge possibilities about impacting the Central Coast waterways once again. We Usually Labor says something, yeah, we've supported coal mines along the way. This is like we say absolutely no to this development up there. The Liberal Party 
said no initially, but they've backflipped really recently and said it's okay to open a massive big mine in our, like it's urban rural community. It's really close to the city. We're not saying yes to mines anywhere near cities like this. And yet the Liberals have said, yes, you can do it up there. So I think the voice of the Central Coast is saying to me very loud and clear that we don't want a coal mine in our urban rural community. Okay, well, I'm sure, no. I'm sure residents no, will no, be... No, no, no. And as an ex-geography <laughs> teacher as well, can I be at... Like, and I've taught all about coastal management and I've taught about protecting our water catchments every step of the way. And the kids that I've taught know what I stand for. Okay, well, I'm glad people will be I'll glad to hear your uh, position on that. <laughs> now, speaking of threats to our waterways, I know you've been on top of this landfill situation at Mangrove Mountain, mm. which has been ongoing for quite some time. New DA just released. Oh. Uh, I know you haven't had a chance to look through that thoroughly as yet, nor have I. But um, your general feeling about that ongoing landfill issue? It's, we have got a massive dumping that's gone on up there. The Environmental Protection Agency has allowed a lot of, I'd say, over dumping in our water catchment. And now this DA is asking for an extension and more availability of what goes on up there. And I say, like I stand beside our community and I was like a crazed woman before Christmas going out there at the train station, asking people to put in submissions to protect our waterway. We had kids from across the coast sending submissions in to say, you cannot dump waste, household waste in our waterways. There's a law against having waste disposal in catchment areas. And so the Woi Woi tip's safe, like it's not in a water catchment, it's all protected, but this is actually in a catchment area on the coast waterways. No, we cannot have more dumping in our waterways. And we have to be very mindful about how we manage our recycling and processes close to our urban developments. Well, that's certainly an issue that's going to be ongoing through the next year or more, I would think. And I think with China shutting down their recycling programs, Australia definitely needs to have a very good look at how we manage our waste and we have to do that very wisely. But we have to be very environmentally conscious and conscious of human well-being, not just for this generation, but generations into the future with government planning related to this. Okay. <clears throat> One thing which I think will impact on very many coast families if Labor is elected in March is a pledge um, to uh, allow access to all school children to free <laughs> public transport, not only on school days, but on weekends through free Opal card use. Um, that oh, sounds like a great initiative. What it's a great, great, great initiative and it's gone down really well with, with mums at the school gates It's just or, and dads at the school gates, but also grandparents on the weekends taking their kids out on public transport. I think the people on the coast are really feeling the pinch. I mean, the electricity prices are going up. Where can we put savings in place to support families? But also the conversations I have about school gate safety. So if we can get some of those kids out of the cars that are only coming a little way, because at the moment there's now a regulation distance where they can't have a bus pass. So if we can get families walking to school and additional riding some bike support to school and get on the buses rather than in their private vehicles, it would be fantastic and good for everybody's health as well. And also good for the community feeling. Rather than isolating ourselves in our cars, getting together as a community and having the conversations at the bus stop with families and getting the kids confident and also onto public transport and saving those bucks. Yeah, and clearing the roads for other motorists who aren't taking children to and from school and are often caught up in that school hour rush. Absolutely, there's, the... like, there's a whole bunch of really good things behind this policy that's going to improve our community wellbeing. Well, that certainly sounds like a, a worthwhile initiative yes. too. Now, the only other thing I wanted to touch on with you, Liesl, there's been a little bit of contention recently about um, the level of power that local councils have in making their planning policies. We've had a big thing erupt where the government is looking at uh, introducing a compulsory IHAP to the Central Coast, which is an independent hearing and assessment panel. We've had Mayor Jane Smith come out and say, it's not on, they're trying to take our powers away. We've had uh, the Gosford, Erinner and Coastal Chamber of Commerce come out and say, they can be a good thing because the councils can slow development and they, these panels can help forward development. What's your, what's your take on that well, situation? Listening to the voice, I think it's hard. The majority of people that I talk to are really concerned about overdevelopment. It's not just here on the coast. I mean, we've seen councils in Sydney that have already had their, their controls ripped away and the government's allowed massive high rise, no parks, no additional school development. The parking and everything is absolutely horrendous. And I know the people on the coast would hate to see that happen and putting it into state control and taking our infrastructure money away from our local council as well is just 
pretty clearly to me a no-go. Mm. I think that's one thing that the Mayor is quite passionate about, that we don't just keep forwarding development without having the infrastructure in place beforehand to cope with what's to come. Absolutely, so. and we've seen, like, whilst I've been in this role, we've seen our local planning power for the Gosford Town Centre being taken away by the government. They've made lots of glossy brochures and we've seen no additional commitment of development. They've spent millions of dollars in our community with some more glossy planning brochures. And what have we seen? We've seen some development have gone through council that are appropriate, and we've seen nothing come of these high rises that are promising, so. It's a tough one. It is a difficult one because do you, can you see the Chamber's perspective perhaps that maybe being too cautious as a council can actually stop that development that's already starting to bring a little bit of life back into the Gosford CBD, for example. Absolutely, and it's not just the Gosford CBD. Like, I've got people down there in Woiwoi saying we don't want these empty shops, we don't want the empty shops there, but we need an additional population to support those shops because, obviously, economically in the past, we haven't had the population to keep things going. So it's a really fine line with control, but I really believe that our local planning powers should be in the minds of people who live in our community, who have got our community's best interest and also the ability to listen to the community in their hearts. Okay, that's some, certainly something we'll be keeping our, our eyes on too. I think um, development and planning is a huge issue here on the coast and people have very definite views either way. So it'd be interesting to see how that plays out. Lisa, I know too that there's some sort of commitment around um, funding of our roads on the Central Coast. What's, what's happening there? Reclassifying some of our roads that belong to the council like it's weird there's federal government roads there's state government roads and there's local roads mm -hmm. and some of our local roads which don't qualify for federal or state funding we're looking at how we can reclassify some of those roads so we can put more money into some of our bigger roads around the community because that's those infrastructure projects as our population grows is something the community is really talking to me about so just giving some more work we've got we get in the process of a brisbane water road upgrade, we're looking at a Blackhall Road upgrade, but people are saying we need to really look after those, some of those roads around our community that need a bit more work that don't fit into the state budget, but pushing to get more funding for our local community. Okay, Lisa Tesh, thank you very much for your time today. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, best of luck in the March 23 election. Uh, for, for the record, I will be wishing good luck to all the candidates and thank you for your time today, Lisa. Thanks very much. Thank you.